How good was Karl Marx at chess? Today we have a very interesting game that was played between Karl Marx and a man named Mayer. I have deliberately put Karl Marx's name in lower cases as he hated all things capital. Anyway, the game was played in 1867 in Germany. Let's get into it. So Karl Marx had the white pieces and his opponent, Mayer, who was actually a German author, has the black pieces. This is a very interesting game. It's definitely very sharp, very tactical, and a lot more exhilarating, as I'm trying to use bigger words now. So Karl Marx starts with the move E4. We now see E5. And now, not normally developing how normal games go with moves like knight F3, knight C6, but playing the exciting move and going f4. This is known as the King's Gambit. The King's Gambit was very popular back in the old days, the 18th century. I do have to be careful about saying in the olden days because I've used this phrase whilst commenting on my mum's childhood uh, and which has led me to get into some serious trouble in the past. So anyway, we see the move f4 and after f4, Maya says, you know what, I'm going to take this pawn as you're offering it to me and he takes on f4. And instead of the normal move knight f3 here, we see Marx playing the move bishop c4 and our Marx opponent wants to hang on to this pawn and place a move g5 just supporting this and Marx develops his knight here to the square f3 developing his pieces ready to castle his king and here Mayer plays g4 and you're probably thinking Okay, Mark's going to move his knight, no problem. Maybe e5, maybe d4, maybe back to g8. But oh no, Mark says, you know what, take my knight and he castles his king. And before you start thinking, okay, this is just a silly game, he's blundered a piece. This is actually known as the Muzio Gambit. And this is played in some top level games. And here, Mayer has some options. He can either develop his pieces normally, or he can take this knight. And he chooses the latter, and he takes this knight on f3. Takes back, and you may be wondering, what on earth, he's down three pieces of material. Does he really have any sufficient compensation for this? Well, you're gonna really see the beauty of this gambit. It's a very nice gambit, and you're gonna see where white its compensation lies. The move queen f6 is played and here you would expect Bartz to maybe get his pawn up, try and attack this bishop, get his knight into the game, but oh no, he plays the move e5, kicking this queen away and seemingly sacrificing a pawn. And this pawn was taken. Um, unfortunately, there is no rookie one straight away as it would lose this rook as it's undefended. So his opponent can kind of get away with this. So after queen e5, we now see the move d3. So Marx is down four pieces of material. Um, and now we see the move bishop h6. As this pawn was being under attack by this bishop, knight c3, just developing his pieces. And let's look at Black's position here. First of all, knight, bishop, they're not developed. This bishop's developed to a weird square. He's only got his queen up and his king is in the open. But if you see white's position here, castle his king, bishop in the game, queen in the game, knight in the game. So white here is down four pieces of material, but definitely has a great development lead. And after the move knight c3, Mayer plays the move knight e7 to just trying to add some more shelter to his king and another layer to kind of stop any immediate checks. Bishop d2, just developing the bishop. And here, bishop d2, you might be wondering why does Marx not take this pawn? After if you were to take this, then a move like queen d4 would actually force an exchange of queens. And when you're up material, you do not want to exchange pieces. Now we see the move knight b to c6. Marx plays the fairly intuitive move, rook e1, attacking this queen and also aligning this rook along the same line as this king. And after rook e1, Marx's opponent has gone, you know what, my queen is in a bit of danger. I need to move it. So he plays the move queen f5. And now Marx takes his opportunity to hop into the d5 square and goes knight d5 with the immediate threat of playing knight c7, forking this king and this rook. So there is a threat that needs to be attended to here. And so Marx's opponent plays the move king d8. So now he sacrificed castling rights. So the conversation keeps on building and Marx has taken stock of his position. I never thought Marx and the word stock would go in the same sentence, but he's taken stock of his own position and he's gone that rook is looking a bit vulnerable so he's gone bishop c3 putting pressure along this lovely diagonal as you see this bishop wasn't really doing anything on d2 so this is a prime example of developing your pieces onto better squares with tempo marx's opponent's rook is under attack so decides to put it on the g8 square and i suppose mayor here has a fairly good position now he's got his rook on this open file got some nice minor pieces is it enough and marx hasn't had enough of moving this bishop and decides 
tries to move it again and goes bishop f6. So now with this bishop f6, it actually pins this knight. So this knight can no longer move as it is pinned to the king. This is what is known as a pin. And Maya wants to break this annoying pin and goes bishop g5. A quite nice move because after bishop g5, which was played in the game, this queen can simply take back. This pawn is hanging though. So uh, Marx happily snaps her up, knight e5. And this move is a bit of a party killer because it attacks this queen and this bishop. And when you're attacking, especially when you're down material, you really want to try have your queen and your bishop. Your bishop can be a great attacker. So Marx is really forced to play the move queen e4, also attacking this knight. But funnily enough, instead of taking this bishop, instead the move d6 is seen. And it would have been a lot better for black here just to take this bishop, um, exchange some pieces off the board. However, d6 has played, I suppose black is trying to get some more development of his own. And here Mark sets a trap, a deadly trap, and plays the move h4. And if this pawn was taken with a move like queen h4, then knight e6 check discovers an attack on this queen, um, and it's a check, so the king has to move and the queen will be lost. So after the move h4, this cannot be taken because of knight e6, so instead we see the move queen g4. And after this move, Marx really needs a star move here, a move that will really put him in the driver's seat, so he goes looking deep for one, and he ends up finding bishop f7. And you might be wondering, can't we just take this bishop? If you were to take this bishop, queen e7 would be checkmate. Um, let me just show you this. So Karl Marx has played the move bishop f7, and his opponent needs to make a response, and this rook is actually under attack, so place a move rook f8. Mark slides his bishop back with tempi and plays a move bishop h5, attacking this queen. The move queen g7 was played, and now Marx plays the top engine move and goes d4, kicking this knight away. The best square is the g6, however, the knight actually goes to the square c6, and the game gets very interesting from this position. This pawn is actually under attack, so he plays a move c3, just nice and solid. And I'm not sure about the next move, uh, Marx's opponent actually plays the really strange move a5. I can't fully understand this move. And now the tables have really turned because Marx immediately plays a move knight e6 check, attacking this king, this rook, and this queen. But the knight can be taken. And bishop e6 was played. Instead of taking back, Marx plays the move rook f8 first, an important detail. Queen f8, and now queen e6. If you thought this move a5 was strange, well, Marx's opponent actually plays rook a6. And he was actually playing pretty well this game, but I guess the longevity of this game maybe got to him, I'm not sure. However, if he didn't play the move rook h6, white's position is absolutely crushing. And Marx goes rook f1, attacking this queen, queen g7. And here Marx notices something. This d7 square is very weak, so bishop g4. Now there is an immediate threat of queen d7 checkmate. Knight b8, defending this threat of d7, and you can't checkmate on c8 as this knight also defends. But here Marx plays rook f7, and after rook f7, Mayer, the German author, resigns. This queen has to move, but the problem is the threat of queen e7 is just too strong. And there's no way for this queen to defend this knight, so his position would just be absolutely crushing. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment, I'm always checking the comments. And if you're interested in any of my other videos, I've got some right here. Thank you for watching, have a good day.